Alright, I am PI every single week. Did you keen for bring you this? This week it is from Xmas. I don't think we've covered Xmas before, so I'm kind of excited. No, we have not. Um yeah, no, I like to always um, check out some companies that we haven't before. Um, I've seen Xmas stuff for a bit and they're they've been they've been very popular on social media. Um, but I've never actually like investigated their chips and so I was like, hey, this is a good excuse. So this week's INA PI it's an avail board, but really it's the uh, X2316 series, which is their latest Core.ai or X Core.ai uh, model of chips. Um, comes available in BGA and also this QFN, which looks like it has some pretty sweet uh, ground and power planes on the bottom. Um, I like that they make uh, chips that are available in QFN for manufacturability. Um, kind of seems like everything these days is uh, BGA. Um, okay, so the X core is um, not an ARM Cortex, right? Which is, you know, we covered a couple of what was called like crossover microcontrollers, ultra powerful microcontrollers from um, NXP, the IMX series, a couple weeks ago. These are also what we call crossover, but they're not Cortex series. Instead, uh, it's X core, it's their own um, core chipset. And you see, there's basically, it's kind of like two processors, but it's like two multi core processors. So, um, there's two tiles, what they call, and each tile, oh, maybe you can make this bigger so you can see the, oh, the yeah. text. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, I can do that. I just need okay. a second here to, to uh, scale it up. Oh, no, just the window bigger. Oh, you wanted to see that? Oh, yeah, you, yeah. You, you didn't want the... You I, just, you yeah, just, I just... You just wanted this. The preview. Yes, thank you. Because uh, okay. I, I wanted to read all the details. Okay. So um, in each tile, uh, left and right, um, they've got the ALU, and they also have their own internal 512 uh, kilobytes of SRAM. And then there's like this communication, the switch and like packet messaging system in between. And each one has five to eight cores. So you'll see like when we go through the list of uh, processors, some of like... Some are like 2300 MIPS and some are like 300, uh, 3500 MIPS. Um, that basically depends on how many cores they've got. Uh, they're, each has uh, 500 megahertz clock rate. And then of course they've got peripherals and they all also have their own um, IO bank. So you'll see at the top, the IO pins are per core. So you can actually have both cores going at the same time doing um, IO control without interfering with each other, which is a common thing uh, when you've got like a microcontroller with dual core, often the I.O. pins are on a shared bus, and so you can't have both cores messing with the I.O. at the same time. But here, you know, go to town. Um, what you're getting is, uh, you know, 10 to 16 cores, um, all clocked really fast, and this is like a super, super powerful chip. Um, it reminds me, you know, I, it's not at all related to, but it kind of is evocative to me of this, like a super ultra-powered propeller chip. Uh, for folks who remember that custom chip from Parallax also had, you know, eight cores, um, special GPIO functions, and was, you know, a non-ARM uh, Cortex chip. But um, got to give them credit because th they wanted to do a chip that was really good at audio processing. It was kind of like the combination of a very powerful microcontroller, multi-core, um, lots of I.O. capabilities, uh, DSP, and now they've added um, some AI acceleration as well. Um, so basically... It's just really, really, really fast, but it's a microcontroller. You're, you have a uh, free RTOS running on it, but you're not dealing with Linux, you're not dealing with uh, QNX or whatever, no no operating system that takes time to boot. It's instantaneous, which means it's great for appliances, devices, uh, cars, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, not only is it really good audio, it's also got um, pretty good video and camera interface as well. Um, and you can also attach external RAM if you want even more processing capability, like you want more space to move in. Flash isn't built in, you attach Flash with like QSPY Flash um, or something similar, but basically uh, very, very fast. And here's just like another, this one I liked because it showed that, you know, the um, 512 kilobytes of RAM. The MIPI is interesting, uh, two lanes, so you can do camera in or display out. Um, both are supported. Actually, on the dev board, you'll see there's a 15-pin like Raspberry Pi compatible uh, camera interface, high-speed USB Fi, um, uh, so you can do host or peripheral. And then in the middle is that um, you know uh, packet switching circuit interface. You can send data back and forth, and uh, yeah, you can have external memory as well, um, LPDDR RAM. And there's ones with tons of pins, so you know you can connect a fairly big package of memory. 
Um, next up uh, for the processor itself uh, comes either a 60 pin QFN, again, um, manufacturable. There's also a, a chunky BGA, um, but with a 0.8 millimeter pitch, so you know not too bad to manufacture. They've got an interesting um, TensorFlow light for microcontroller, but they've kind of got like a workflow setup where you can uh, train your TensorFlow uh, models in light, you know, the Python API, and then convert it into uh, TensorFlow Micro runtime using their like um, online tools. So. Uh, you know, optimized uh, TensorFlow Lite uh, for my controllers. Like you actually do need to have a fairly good processor. I feel like you know, eight cores running 500 megahertz, you have a chance of it. I'm actually kind of surprised they couldn't run TensorFlow Lite directly, since you can run it on um, you know single board computers that are about the same um, MIPS capability. Um, but instead of you know most uh, chips where you you know you'd probably have a microcontroller, maybe a separate DSP, or you'd have to really fine tune everything. Um, you just get like very very high performance, and you know this is the kind of their their money shot graph where they're like, hey, you know, if you had an ARM Cortex M7 running at 600 megahertz, look, we have so many more cores and we're so much more optimized. They don't mention what this mystery ARM Cortex M7 at 600 megahertz is, but I'm I'm betting it's probably the STM 32H7 or F7, which is good because a lot of people like to use that chip. You know, that's kind of the highest end microcontroller you can get these days. Um, but they've been hard to get because of the chip shortage. And also, I love competition. I want to have more chips of that power capability um, available to people. So you know, we're not just only buying one chip. We have multiple options. So I'm I'm very psyched to see um, more pressure at the high end of microcontrollers bringing that price down. And you'll see that the price here is is very comparable. Lots of different options for this chip fam. Like I said, different. Um, you need know, you know 2400 or uh, 3200 um, MIPS. I, I guess, no, they also have the same logical cores, maybe some are clocked faster. Um, IO voltage can vary. So that's one thing I noticed, 1.8 or 3.3 volts. Um, they all have the same amount of RAM. Uh, they all have the same number of cores. Uh, they have different number of IO based on whether you have the 60 pin QFN or the 265 pin um, FPGA. Um, some do and do not have the external memory and uh, MIPI capability, which makes sense if you're doing graphical display stuff with a you know nice MIPI display that maybe is uh, uh, you know 1024 by 720 or something. You'll probably want uh, the external memory to do the frame buffer, and of course, DigiKey is a supplier. They also have some very cute dev boards. Uh, this is one for the um, X Core AI series. Um, you know, pretty simple, just has the, the camera connector, which again, looks suspiciously like the Raspberry Pi camera. Um, Wi-Fi, native USB, debug USB, and of course audio, because they're very specialized audio. Um, you can see on the left, there's the, the left and the right, there's the GPIO banks. Um, probably the left-hand side is one core and the right-hand side is the other core. Um, this is the dev board that is actually featured for the uh, XU316 series. And um, you can tell that it's like, hey, are you designing some sort of like DJ mixer or synthesizer or something? Which this would be a really good job for. Um, got two MIDI interfaces. I've rarely seen devices that have two MIDI, two mm -hmm. RCA, um, eight uh, IO, uh, sorry, analog outputs, line outputs um, through, it looks like uh, four different, four or, yeah, four different. Um, uh, on the right, I2S, uh, ADC, DAC combos. I think it's the TI TVP series. Um, power supply on the bottom, uh, USB external power, all that good stuff. Um, but you know, one thing I think that they're definitely going after is the uh, family of like synth, DJ equipment, um, smart speakers. They've already kind of you know gone after that market a lot. I think also control panels for. Um, home devices or for automotive or industrial equipment where you have a noisy background and maybe you want to have speech recognition or, or you want to do stereo control. Yeah, what's that right there? That's clock in. Um, I think that is if you want to, you know, you usually have a crystal um, wow. for clocking the chip. But I mean, this, they don't really brag about the power, low power usage because it's got like 16 cores in it. So, um, you know, probably you want to mess with uh, your clock frequency to see if you can tweak mm -hmm. your power usage, or maybe uh, for precision, 
you know you have to have a, a good steady clock if you want to have your audio coming out at exactly 44.1 uh, kilohertz so it's a you know yeah sync signal um, you can download the schematics for their Explorer board, which I found kind of handy because it kind of shows you um, all the capabilities again, lots of audio uh, functionality, and also how they split up the power supply, which is, again, have, have a pretty beefy power supply needed for these chips. Um, software tools are available. It's uh, it, Basically, they say use free RTOS. Everything is running on under free RTOS. Um, you do need their compiler because it's not on Cortex, so you're not going to use... Um, ARM GCC, but they have tool chains available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, and they've got on GitHub a lot of their libraries. This is just a couple of their libraries. They have like, you know, 76 of them. They have a library for everything um, that you can do with their chipsets. Uh, and I looked at some of the code. All of it looked like it had lots of good uh, example code. You know, one of their things is um, clearly they're trying to make it very easy for people to transition from using ARM Cortex to using their chips. So they have to go a little bit above and beyond with their um, SDK offerings. Um, and uh, one thing I thought was cool is like, oh, it's you know, USB. it's USB. And I bet they saw something TUSB. And whenever I see TUSB, I'm like, oh, I bet they use TUSB. And they do. And I would like to um, point out how cool it is that uh, the TUSB stack is licensed so freely that silicon vendors are now using yeah. TUSB and they're adding support for their chipsets because we do not restrict. Uh, who gets to use TUSB. So good, even the biggins use it. Yes. Um, okay. So very neat. <laughs> you know, it's, again, it's it's a, it's, it's a transition because a lot of people using these kind of high-end chipsets, they, they tend to be using ARM Cortex. But I think the power and functionality, which, you know, you're not going to get with ARM because usually when you see multi-core ARM, it's usually like one big processor and another small processor. Um, maybe it's a licensed thing. I don't know. But, you know, X-Core owns their own IP for the silicon, so they want to toss 16 cores in there, go for it. Available on DigiKey. Uh, and totally in stock. Um, yeah. And you can see the pricing. It's really quite reasonable, um, considering that you get the RAM built in. You don't have to add external RAM. It's almost completely fully built. Like, there's not, you don't really need a lot of accessories. You need a crystal, maybe some QSPI memory, and you're good to go. Um, lots of peripherals, lots of functionality. Maybe good for your next audio project. I did notice um, when I Googled around for this part, a lot of audiophile DACs, like stereo drivers, use, it. use the um, this XMOS series. Sense. Yeah. All right, we're going to play a video, and then we'll see you on the other side for new products. Voice enriches experience. Pan right, zoom center screen. We're being pushed back. Game, find more players. Here are the other players online. I know them that we need some help. Now we're talking. Yeah. Level smashed. <laughs> Game pause. New upgrades are available. Do you want to check your options? Yeah, let's see them. Emma, here are your options. Okay. Dan, here are your options. No, I'm good. Buy option two. Do you want to use your game credits, Dan? Yes. Dan, purchase confirmed. Are there any other options you want to look at? Game t-shirts are on offer today. No, thank you. Ready? Ready. Game start. Scan horizon. Are you turned on by voice? Hi, I'm Olympia. 